Hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here again. And in this video, I wanna talk about the advantages of microscopy as a hobby. Why is amateur microscopy a really nice and a good hobby? Well, I've uh, collected a few points here, which I'm just gonna go uh, through here. First of all, I think uh, amateur microscopy is a really good hobby because it has a low entry barrier. What does this mean? Um, it's relatively easy to start a microscopy. All you have to do is, is you have to go out, you have to buy yourself a microscope, and uh, you basically, you can start um, observing uh, the nature and the environment, and the learning curve is not very high. So this means uh, if you watch a few YouTube videos um, or read uh, some instruction manuals, it's relatively easy for you to start using the microscope, and as a Matter of fact, uh, many people already know how to use a microscope um, because uh, they've uh, used microscopes in school. So um, it is uh, therefore it does not take um, a lot of, of time um, and effort, and also not even a lot of money to actually start a microscopy as a hobby. A second uh, advantage is, is uh, that uh, microscopy allows you to see new things. So it's a very visual um, uh, hobby and uh, a little bit like amateur astronomy in that sense, um, and it helps you to expand your own horizons. So there is something in microscopy that helps you satisfy your desire for exploration but in a way which is very how shall I say um, very friendly okay so there is no um, there is no complex uh, there are no complex investigations that you have to do or complex experiments that you have to set up um, in many cases it's like this that you simply take a sample that you would like to look at you might have to prepare it a little bit so there might be a little bit of laboratory work also involved but in many cases you just put the sample directly um, on the microscope slide and you can start observing and uh, this basically gives you a new view of your environment and of uh, the surrounding that is around you. And there is a nice uh, community of microscopists around the world and uh, what we have is we have forums so we have uh, of course also YouTube channels for example like the one that you're watching like uh, right now um, and uh, this allows you to actually um, exchange ideas and also pictures um, and uh, yeah a possible also observation uh, ideas and uh, it allows you to connect up with other people and this is of course also something that keeps up motivation and uh, allows you to feel part of a larger community. Microscopy is uh, financially scalable and uh, what do I mean when I say that? It basically means that, that uh, you can already buy microscopes quite cheaply for let's say less than um, 100 euros or 100 uh, US dollars approximately um, but there is no end to that so uh, essentially the most expensive microscopes can cost several thousands of, 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 of euros or dollars um, and it really depends what you're interested in and uh, what your expectations are but it is like this that even relatively low cost microscopes can already uh, um, yes, uh, provide you with uh, a look into an entirely new world. You do not have to uh, wait and save a lot of money um, so that you can start the hobby. Um, but uh, if you're uncertain about it, you just might as well buy, you, buy yourself a relatively low cost microscope. And then uh, basically you have not lost a lot of money. And then if you're interested in, in, in this hobby, then you can always uh, keep on yeah, expanding it a little bit. And uh, sooner or later, you might actually buy yourself a better one. Um, maybe maybe one that uh, where you can also attach a camera like this here. Um, and so there, the opportunities are there um, and uh, the financial uh, range uh, is uh, really uh, very wide and there is something in it for pretty much uh, every, every pocket. Yeah, another thing, um, you, do not, you don't need a lot of space. Uh, all you do is, is uh, you basically set up your microscope on a table um, and uh, you can start uh, observing. Um, and if you do not you use the microscope anymore, you just put a dust cover over it or you basically put it into a cupboard so that it doesn't get dusty. Um, and yeah, you lock it away. Um, and uh, it's really not a, a very, it's not very big. M most microscopes are not very big. Um, and therefore it's easily, they're easily portable and uh, you can easily move them around uh, whenever uh, um, and take them out whenever you want to use them and this is a significant advantage because many people actually do not have a lot of space uh, for large uh, technical devices and so on and uh, but microscopes re in reality they don't need a lot of space and uh, yes, it is possible to combine microscopy also with other pastimes and interests. Uh, so for example, if you're collecting minerals or if you're collecting stamps, then you might actually want uh, to maybe get yourself a stereo microscope and so an existing hobby can already be expanded uh, this way as well. Um, if you, for example, own an aquarium at home where you're with uh, some fish, I mean, there are the algae, are pretty quite, uh, quite nice and interesting to observe as well under the microscope. Um, if you um, are a beekeeper and if you um, yeah, make honey, 
honey, for example, you can use microscopes uh, to determine the pollen uh, that you can find in honey. So there are a lot of activities uh, that uh, where you can find a connection or cross linkage uh, to microscopy. Um, and uh, there are many, um, yeah, I would say almost that the possibilities are almost uh, endless uh, in, in that respect. And uh, microscopy um, also is, uh, there's a lot of action in, in microscopy. So for example, if you watch a water sample from a pond, um, you can see a lot of organisms moving around. There is a lot of activity going on. So especially also fascinating for children. Um, you can actually see cells divide. You can actually see uh, like the chloroplasts inside water plants moving around, for example. Um, you can also see uh, paramecia and ciliates uh, moving around on the slide uh, looking for food. So there are many uh, things where there's movement and where there's also color involved and in that sense it it's can be quite exciting and in that sense there's uh, there are quite, quite a few things to explore um, you can compare for example different water samples from different places and can you can explore how basically the organisms are different and it's quite fascinating in that sense and it never gets boring and if you want to, you can also become an expert uh, in a certain field. Uh, for example, you can start to study foraminifera. These are little um, yeah, uh, shells uh, that you can find in sand samples. Um, you can uh, take it into more artistic direction and uh, uh, make some uh, micrographs uh, using the microscope. Um, you can also do a variety of other things uh, like for example collecting of, of microscope slides or collecting of uh, antique microscopes. Microscope repair is, is one of the things and tinkering around and, and tuning the microscope that's also uh, something that's uh, sometimes quite popular. So you can see that there are different uh, yeah different sub areas uh, that you can specialize in um, and that you can follow. And uh, the last point um, is is that uh, there are uh, plenty of microscope companies um, around uh, that sell microscopes, so it is not difficult to get your hands uh, on 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 a good microscope. If you basically order yourself a microscope and if it's of a reasonable quality, then essentially you can already see all of the relevant things uh, that uh, a microscopist, uh, microscopist probably ever wants to see. Um, so there is uh, modern microscopes are already good enough uh, that they cover pretty much uh, the whole range of, 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 uh, of specimens that you ever want to see. Um, there are of course also a few highly specific uh, microscopes uh, around uh, which are um, optimized to see for example bacteria. They are kind of difficult to see because they're quite transparent so you need phase contrast and all of these specialized optics uh, to actually see them better. It's not a requirement that you have these optics, but it makes it easier. But generally, all of these things are available, um, and uh, this is nowadays possible because uh, with online um, and uh, buying things online, it's uh, basically the accessibility is much easier nowadays than it used to be, let's say, about 20 or 25 years ago when I bought my microscope. It, the internet wasn't around uh, yet uh, to the extent, and there was not there were no online shops, so I actually had to find a local microscope uh, a retailer uh, to sell me the microscope. Uh, um, and uh, it was much more difficult nowadays. Life is much easier in that sense. And uh, if you're interested, my recommendation is, is buy yourself a rel relatively low cost microscope. Not the, not the I would say, uh, one of still reasonable quality, but a relatively low cost one. And, and then basically you can take it from there. And if you find out that you're not interested in microscopy, uh, then you can always uh, resell your microscope or at least you have not lost a lot of money in that sense. Okay, I think uh, for now that should be it. Uh, and I wish you a nice day and uh, happy micro hunting as always and bye-bye. Uh,